Transactional Data Lakes with Apache Iceberg on AWS Introduction and Tutorial We are going to learn how to insert, update and delete data on data lakes, merge incoming data with existing data, time travel that is view data changes over time and how to automate the ETL workflow. We are going to use Apache Iceberg for our transactions on data lake. So let's learn more about it. Apache Iceberg is an open table format for very large analytics data sets. Athena supports read, write, that is insert, update, delete at record level, time travel and DDL queries for Apache Iceberg tables. You are guaranteed data correctness under concurrent write scenarios and it supports table evolution. To use it, declare table type as iceberg in data catalog. A fictitious company, Order Bytes, receives incremental order information in the form of CSV file uploads frequently. We must merge the incoming incremental data into the existing orders data pool to facilitate current and historical analysis. Here's the architecture for this use case. Our data lake location is a bucket called order bytes. It has two folders, orders in and orders all. The incremental orders.csv file lands in orders in folder at regular intervals. The data catalog has a table called orders in pointing to the orders in folder and another table called orders all pointing to the orders all folder. The orders all table is of type iceberg. Athena and Apache Iceberg facilitates querying and updating of data. An ETL job in the form of a step function selects data from orders in table and inserts or updates it in orders all table. Therefore, the orders all table provides access to our consolidated order pool with latest and historical data, thus allowing for time travel. Our incremental order CSV file has the following structure. It has columns like order ID, product name, quantity, order date and status. It can have new orders or existing orders with some changes to them. Let's look at our data lake S3 bucket. The bucket name is order bytes. It has two folders, orders in and orders all. Orders in is the folder where our incoming files will land. Meanwhile, orders all is the folder where all the data from incoming files is accumulated. So how does the incremental CSV file land in the raw orders in folder? In practice, this will happen automatically via some process. For example, changes to orders inside a transactional database are exported to a file via AWS DMS Database Migration Service CDC change data capture process. Or the CSV file might simply be an FTP upload from an external system. However, we will not do this as a part of our demo and instead upload the CSV file ourselves. So this is what our incoming CSV file looks like. It has order ID, product name, quantity, order date and status columns and data related to that. For now it has just these three rows. Let us upload our CSV file in the orders in folder here in S3. So let's select that file and uh, place it here and now we can hit the upload button. So our file is here and we are ready. We are in AWS Glue console and we are going to create a database in our data catalog. So under databases we hit database and uh, provide a database name. Let's call it uh, order bytes db and hit create database. So there you have it.
we are in Athena console and we will create a new workgroup. So let's hit create workgroup, provide a workgroup name. Uh, we will call it order bytes WG and we will choose Athena engine version 3. Now let's hit create workgroup and there we have our new workgroup. Let's create a table in our database in data catalog in query editor. We will choose our workgroup and uh, correct database order bytes db and let's see what our create table sql looks like create external table orders underscore in it has all the columns that we have seen earlier in our csv file and the location points to orders in folder in our order bytes bucket so let's uh, run this okay so the query is successful and we see a new table here now we will create a table of type iceberg let's look at our sql so this table is called orders underscore all and it has all the columns that we have seen before partitioned by day on order date and the location is pointing to the orders all folder and the table type is iceberg so this is the table we will use to insert update data right now we will look at what data we have and how we can add some data to orders underscore all table but first let us see what is there in orders underscore in so select star from orders underscore in we should uh, see three rows here so this data is coming from the csv file we had uploaded now let us uh, try to do select star from orders underscore all and uh, there will be no data in this table because we haven't added any data here right so there's nothing there now let's try to add some data to orders underscore all insert into orders underscore all by selecting from orders underscore in let's run that sql okay so that's successful now let us again do select star from orders underscore all and uh, we should have some data there now let's run that okay so there you have it we have successfully inserted three rows there now that we have inserted some data let's check the contents of orders all folder in s3 so here under data you can see that there are various partitions created right and there is data in parquet format so uh, this is all a result of our insert okay now we will try to update some data in orders underscore all table okay so let's write our update sql so update orders underscore all set quantity to 100 where order underscore id is 9 triple to 1 let's run that sql okay so that's successfully executed now let's select star from orders underscore all and here you should see that the quantity is 100 against order id 9 triple to 1 so the data is successfully updated we will do uh, one more update let's modify this update sql let's set quantity to quantity plus 100 and for the same order id let's run that so that ran successfully and let's select star from orders underscore all run and uh, look at the results and there you see the quantity has changed to 200 against order id 9 triple two Let's do some time travel now. Let us see how the data in orders underscore all table changed over a period of time. So select star from orders underscore all dollar history. Let's run that. And this shows how the data changed over a period, period of time using snapshot IDs. So if we query on a particular snapshot ID, we will be able to find data 
as of that snapshot id so let's copy a snapshot id which pertains to our first update and query the table select so start from orders underscore all version as of that snapshot id uh, that should be for version as of let's run that and we have the results and here you can see against order id 9221 our quantity is 100 which pertains to the update we had made at that point in time okay let's look at the history one more time and this time pick up the latest snapshot id replace that with the latest snapshot id and run this sql Okay, so there you see against order ID 9 triple to 1, quantity is 200. Now we will try to retrieve data based on time. So, but first let's look at history. So let's start from orders or history. Let's look at the first column here. So the insert was at 907, then there was an update at 1037, and then another update at 1040. Okay. Now our SQL has four timestamp as of 1010. That is like some time after the first insert. So let us run the SQL. Hit the run button and uh, waiting for result. Let's look at the result. So that's the state of data at 1010. Okay, um, we can also query based on time interval, like you know, what was the state of data 30 minutes ago. So current timestamp minus interval 30 minutes. Let's run that. Okay, and that's the result. That's the state of data 30 minutes ago. We will make some changes to our CSV file and upload it to S3. But before that, let us take a quick look at what our data looks like at present. Select star from orders underscore all. Let's look at the results. So that's what our data looks like. Now we will open our CSV file and uh, make some changes to it. Okay. So here um, we will change the quantity for lamp to something else. Let's make it 1000. In addition, let's change the product name right from pillow to let's call it pillow large. Okay. And we will also add a new row here. So 95555. That's our order ID. Provide uh, product name, quantity, order date, and status. Okay. And then save the file. All right, now let's upload this to S3 orders in directory. We'll simply overwrite this file. Okay. Uh, select the file for upload. Hit upload and a file is uploaded. Now in Athena, we are going to select data from the CSV file and merge that into orders underscore all via a single SQL query. So this is our query. You can see the merge statement merge into orders underscore all using orders underscore in and the match criteria is based on order id so when there is a match we perform an update so these are records that we have seen before existing records which are being updated and when not matched basically new records we perform an insert let's run this sql statement 
so that completed successfully now uh, let us go back and uh, select data from orders underscore all and here we should see the new record which is order and underscore id 95555 with quantity 500 and updated records product name is below large for order id 91001 so that worked on expected lines We are in AWS Step Functions console. Let us create a step function. Select State Machines. Create State Machine. We will design our workflow visually and type will be standard. Next. And here, uh, let us search for Athena related tasks and uh, we will select Start Query Execution. And that we need to configure by providing our SQL query that we want to execute and workgroup name. So let's paste our merge SQL query there. Okay. And uh, provide our workgroup name. So that is order bytes workgroup. Athena expects us to provide an output location, although in this case we don't really care for the output because we are not doing a select statement here. So we simply uh, point to a queries folder under order bytes bucket. We will create this folder later. Okay, so all set with that. All right, now let us also select wait for task to complete because we are going to add another task after this, which must execute only after our Athena query execution is completed. So the next task would be delete object for s3 so after the input csv file has been processed it must be deleted so that it is never reprocessed so we provide the bucket name and the key which is basically orders in folder with the name of our csv file alternately you could move the csv file to another location but here we are just deleting that okay we are all set hit next Okay, hit next. Let's provide a name for our step function. We will call it order bytes step function and uh, leave that as create new role. Turn the logging on. Okay, and we can leave all of that as default and hit create state machine. Now that our step function has been created, let us look at the new role that has been created. We will uh, check whether it has all the necessary permissions. All right, so let's look at the permissions and here we need to add an inline policy for S3 access, right? So we go under the JSON section and uh, that's our policy. So here we are providing access to the order bytes bucket for all S3 actions. All right, review policy. Let's give it a name. We will call it uh, order bytes S3 policy. Okay, and hit create policy next. All right, so we can see our policy that we just created. So we are all set. Let's go back to our step function and uh, review it once. Edit workflow studio select start query execution and here under output location we have provided path to our queries folder so let's go to s3 and create this folder right so under order bytes bucket hit create folder provide name as queries create folder so 
now we will upload our new csv file to the orders in folder so let's first update our order csv file so this is what it looks like at present uh, we are going to add a couple of records here so add a new order id some product name and quantity, order date, and status. All right. And uh, let's add one more row. Provide an order ID, uh, product name, quantity, order date, and status. And uh, let us also update an existing record. So we will change the product name lamb to something else, lamb colorful. Okay. Yeah. Let's save this file and upload. All right. Select that file, drop that file here, and uh, hit upload. Now we are ready to run the step function. So let us select the step function. But before we start execution, let us go to Athena and do a select star from orders underscore all so that we know um, what data we have under orders underscore all table right now. Right. So that's what the data looks like at present. And we already have our new CSV file. So let's start execution. OK. So the step function is running. Um, the first step, Athena start query execution in blue color, uh, which represents that the particular step is in progress. So we are waiting essentially for these steps to turn green. Let's uh, look at the table view. Right. So the first task is running. All right, go back to the graph view and wait for this to turn green. So all right, so our step function execution is complete. All the tasks have turned green. Okay, so now we can go to Athena and check updated data, right? So let's do that select star from orders underscore all again. And uh, let's look at the results. So there you see the new rows as well as the update, right? So all the data from our CSV file has been merged. So that worked on expected lines. And our CSV file in S3 orders in directory should have been deleted. Okay, so let's select orders in and we don't have the CSV file. Here. You could schedule the step function to run at preset intervals or be triggered on an event. So with that, we come to the end of our discussion on transactional data lakes with Apache Iceberg on AWS.